So here I'm going to talk about principal components analysis and, and doing that in R. Uh, basically, it's a way to take a number of variables and reduce a, num a set of variables into a single, com um, you know, single principal component that contains the majority of the variance. Um, it's not used a whole lot in economics, and some economists don't, don't really think about it too much. In other disciplines, people think it's great. You see it a lot in psychology and geography and elsewhere. But So I'm just going to use it to make a, a multivariate index, like a single index that captures multiple variables at once. Okay. Now, what I'm going to show is that my index doesn't really work too well, and there's a good alternative that's uh, standard deviation weighted indices. Basically, if you have three components, for example, you can take each one and just deflate it or divide by its own standard deviation. And so the component, the parts of this, you know, the series that has the most variance, um, will will be d divided by the larger number, and then that'll kind of equal it out there. And so you just sum those weighted series. So PCA is a little more sophisticated. I'm going to show you how to do both, and then I'll. Show you my why the PCA doesn't work too well. Um, now, because I'm doing, um, I think, eight, eight or ten countries at once, um, my code is built to do a loop and do multiple, uh, ver you know, do it ten times. Um, I actually put my code at the bottom if, if you want to steal that code for your own purposes. But one thing I got to point out is when you steal code, you got to make sure that you change the parts you need to change. I'm doing this for some time series. Um, I also do it for geography, but you're obviously you're not going to take you know Chicago block groups and put quarters on them. Um, you could, you have to make sure that you don't copy the code you're never going to use. In this case, don't use time series commands when you're not doing time series. Right. So, so I've got uh, some different components for what's called exchange market pressure, which I do some research on. Basically, you're looking at uh, not only currency depreciations, but you're looking at uh, countries spending down or losing reserves, so international exchange reserves. And then also, you can, the central bank can hi hike interest rates to keep a currency from weakening. And so basically, you have currency weakening, loss of reserves, or hike in interest rates, which are three things that uh, combine to show how much pressure a currency is under. Okay, so I did that for 10. I think I say eight countries here. Um, yeah, it, does, it is actually eight. Um, but, but basically, you've got, you know, I'm going to do, do it for each of the countries. I'm going to compare, and then I'm going to do two versions, okay? Now, I set this to just click source, uh, which I will do. Um, but the idea is that... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of run it through step by step too, right? So some of the commands are basically so prints nicely if you click source. So I've got eight countries, three different components. Um, you know, like I said, the exchange rate changes, reserve losses, or reserve changes, which have to be negative, and then interest rate differential changes, right? And then the time span is 1995 quarter two to 2020 quarter two. Okay, so it's going to be 24 different things. I'm going to make eight series, right? So each country has one principal component made out of three series. Okay, so I'm going to put my data, right? And look here, I've got uh, my series here, and I, I intentionally didn't really label it, okay? I've got my observation numbers, number one, so that's column one. Um, could be a year as well. Um, and then I've got the first eight series are uh, a series I made just for comparison purposes, but in this case, I'm just going to recreate it for my example here. So we're actually not going to use two through nine. But here I've got A, B, and C. Those are the first three, first countries, so Bolivia has the three components that are going to be combined using PCA to make a single series. And then the next three are going to be, I believe, Brazil and so forth, right? So that's my all the way up. Now this is seven, right, because the first one didn't get a number, but this is the eighth country, okay? So the dimension is going to be all right, 33 here because um, I've got nine series on the end plus those 24 that I need for the eight countries, okay? Now one thing to look at here, my column names, all right, again, deliberately not labeled, but I've got the numbers in my code. You look at the tail, all right, you can see here that, uh, you know, the, it looks clean. There's no NAs at the bottom, okay? So here's my PCA, right? Now, much of this is extra. Like I said, much of the, uh, the, the code in here is designed just to make the table at the end. But when you're doing PCA, these are the things you need. You need eigenvalues, right? So eigenvalues come from matrix algebra. It's, literal, it's like from the German, it's the own value, but it has to do with the diagonals of the matrix matrix, but you want eigenvalues that are above 1, okay? So one big thing that I talk about is when you have, um, when, when you make principal components analysis and you have a number of variables you're combining, in this case 3, you're going to get as many as 3 principal components, okay? But you're only going to use the ones or care about the ones with eigenvalues greater than 1, 
All right, so if, if one, you know, the first value is 1.1 1 .1 and the second one is 0 0.8, you can only say there's one principal component. Now, if you have 10 variables you're combining, uh, you can have 10 principal components. A lot of times people just look at the first because the first principal component is going to contain most of the variance, or most of the common variance in your se set of series, okay? Now, the first and second and third and so forth, each additional principal component is orthogonal or, or it's independent or has no correlation between um, that and any other principal component. Okay, and so, so what you're doing is you're projecting your data onto a new set of coordinates and you're trying to just capture that common variance. So, so the eigenvalues are important. Factor loadings are important. That shows how much weight is given to each of the variables that are the components of your new series. And then uh, I call it PC1 or the first principal component. That's actually the new series that's created using these formulas. So you can actually compress these three variables into a single component. Okay, so, so again, some of this code is extra. I've got, I'm going to set graphical parameters, I'm going to have a four uh, row, two column graph I'm going to make, and then I'm setting my margins here, um, and then here I've got my list of, I'm going up by J's this time, and, and this is just the numbers that are going to choose which columns to get, okay, because remember, the first nine are, are not going to use here, and um, it, there's 33 columns, and so I'm going to start at 10, and then I'm going to go by three, because I'm taking three at a time. Okay, and, and now whenever you run a loop in R, you start with empty sets and then you start to fill them in as you go. So I'm going to make a correlation tab, and that's going to be because I'm making two versions of this exchange market pressure series. One uses PCA and one uses the simpler standard deviation series. So uh, I'm going to see if they're correlated or not. We're actually going to see that they're not. Okay, and I found that in a paper I did once. You can use PCA and it actually is no, it's actually worse than not using PCA. All right. I'm going to make a loadings table as well here. So these are my blank sets. Now for I18, this is basically going to take, um, I'm going to make a set every time of those three parts that I need, the three series, exchange changes, uh, reserve changes, which need to be negative, but we'll see that they're not always negative, and then uh, interest rate hikes. Okay, so this is going to take three columns at a time for those eight countries that I'm doing. Okay, so within this, I've got, I'm going to choose, I call S1 because it's like set one. Now, I, I commented this out, but you could set those reserve changes to be reserve losses. It doesn't really help. But you can say, like, no, it, because it's a loss of reserves, not a change of reserves. Um, I want it to be negative. Um, doesn't, again, the results don't really change. I've run it, I don't think I'm going to do that here. Okay, and then here's EMP1, which is just the alternative series. Um, versus PC1. Okay, so this is basically taking the first column over its standard deviation minus the second column over its own standard deviation plus the third column over that's own standard deviation. Okay, and then I give them some names. Now within, uh, so that, that'll give me the first alternative, and then I do PCA. Now this code is, is particular to R. Um, I, I show it also in Gretel. I'm in my notes, which is just straightforward, but right here you say the principal component of the series, it's centered, moving across zero, it's scaled, um, and if you ever do this like in Python, you have to do some sort of standard scaling, this will scale it because, for example, exchange rate changes are small percentages, but reserve losses are like a percentage of the monetary base, so they could be much larger than one, right? This will automatically scale it. Okay, so I, this is my default here, and the other thing is that I assume that it's going to be um, correlation-based, and some people will say well, you should use covariance-based, I correlation-based, but that's sort of the default. All right, so then I'm going to make my, um, this is how you get uh, the, sorry, I'm going to do this right here, all right, well actually, um, I'll show you at the end. Um, but, but right now you can say, well, this is how you get the eigenvalues. It's the square root of the standard deviations. So I make this series, which is the principal component, but that's not my answer. I'm going to make the eigenvalues, and then I'm going to take the rotation here, okay? And then I can show the loadings, all right? And then I'll take the loadings, and I'm going to add it to my loadings table, okay? So, um, so actually, I'll show, I'll show you that for just one, all right? I equals one, all right? And so what does S1 look like? Uh, it's just the three series here. Now this could be more of a fixed exchange rate at some point. It's got some zeros in the exchange rate changes, but these are the reserve, reserve losses. Um, you can see they're kind of big. And again, this is the change in the uh, value of reserves. It's, and usually it's scaled by the lag monetary base. And this is the interest rate height versus, uh, the change in interest rate differential versus the United States. Okay, now if I do EMP1, all right, all I'm gonna do, is, again, this is my alternative. This is what the series looks like. Okay, so I basically took three components and made them into one time series that's 103 quarters long. 
All right. I can do this, column names, all right, but here's my PCA here, and, and I just ran principal components analysis using R, and you can see what it gives is the standard deviations, and it gives rotation. I've got to kind of convert that using you know, a little bit extra work. Um, got to take the square root of the, of the standard here, all right? So here is the eigenvalues. Yeah, you can see that two are actually above one. Right, so there's actually going to be two principal components, but not the third. But there's three possible because there's three data series. Okay, and then PCA one, excuse me, PC one is just the rotation, and this is going to be um, the first step. Okay, and then if I take the loadings, which is the first column, and that's these are the loadings for all three of them. Um, I'm not going to add this to my loadings tab. All right, and then I'm going to uh, get the loadings here, which is just the first column. You can see that uh, this actually doesn't match theory because this should be positive. All right, this is correctly negative, but according to the theory that this is positive, this should be negative, this should be positive, already the loadings don't match. Okay, Here are my eigenvalues, which I already showed you, and then I could do the first two principal components here. All right, all right, And then, so these are the ones possible. Neither actually miss the, uh, match the signs. Okay, And so I could take first ones here and so forth and here I make it a time series and so forth all right um, now I can all right, let me just make sure I run these all right I can look at the correlation here they're somewhat correlated and I can plot them here all right um, and that's just for one country okay and then that's the table that I make but I am going to make my tables and stuff so uh, so it works all right let me just run it here take care of all this and just run it all right, so it does it as a loop, and I did it for all eight of the countries here. So you can see that um, the red is the non-PCA version. It sort of tracks for some countries, but in other cases, it's kind of off. Blue is PCA. Nigeria seems to hold pretty well, um, but others don't seem to. South Africa seems pretty low. So it, I'm just actually showing you that the principal components doesn't work too well in this case. Um, but you can see what it looks like. All right, I mentioned Nigeria um, looked pretty, tracked pretty well, and it has a high correlation that's positive. A lot of these are actually negative. All right, so they don't really match. Bolivia looks good. Uh, Nigeria looks good. Uruguay is actually almost completely close to negative one. Right? So, but I use principal components to take three three series of an actual economic concept, and I made a single index of this market pressure. Okay, so basically the, the economic idea again is that um, sometimes currencies don't fall when they should because the central bank intervenes. You can actually add interventions like spending down reserves or hiking interest rates, and I'd say, like, look, the currency would have fallen if we didn't do this. This is how much the, the currency was under, right? So in this case, I usually just use standard deviation rates, but this is how you would do it in R, right? And I did the extra step of running a loop to do eight of these at once to graph them, right? So, so this is actually graphing commands with a label, a legend, and stuff. And then here I can actually print my results. You can actually see all the countries. Um, factor loadings and so forth, okay? All the eigenvalues, you can see how many, um, you know, for example, South Africa has one principal component, Uruguay has one, Mexico and Bolivia may, may or may not have two, okay? So that's how you choose. You, can, you choose the number of principal components based on the eigenvalues. You look at the contribution of each, you know, component or subcomponent with, with the loadings, and then you make your new series, um, which I call PC1. Okay, and he, down here is my code. Um, you set S1 here with whatever your series is. You, you change, you have to change dates, change your column names as necessary. Um, change, change, I say change dates, but I you know, mean change names. And then here's the PCA part, eigenvalues. Uh, I, I start with the lo ro rotation, but then I wind up subsetting it. Okay, and then this gives me all the parts, all right? If you don't have a time series, don't use time series commands. That's really important for students. Like, you gotta know what you're copying and what you're not copying. But I use these for geography. You might actually have um, IDs, geo IDs for Chicago block groups. And then you could actually map a series, uh, an index, like an urban index of, of something. And, and it could actually be mapped geographically instead of time, right? So some of this does need to be changed, so I kind of left it in there so you can think about it, but this will give you all the, the key components, right? So now this one, I think this was Uruguay because that's the last country. I can run all this, right? And then this is the Uruguay series here, okay? Um, so, so that's what I did, okay? Uh, this is the code in R, 
But over here I'm showing you what R does. So I took eight countries, I'm combining three sub-series into a single index of market pressure, I'm comparing it against uh, just a non-PCA version and finding that they're actually not that close. But I'm using PCA to get eigenvalues, loadings, and then to create an index. And that's kind of what we use it for in economics.